structure of pyruvate, you know the structure of acetyl-CoA from pyruvate. I didn't really say you should know acetyl-CoA, but you should know acetyl-CoA. It's basically pyruvate uh, minus one, one, uh, one carbon unit. Um, and then once you know pyru once you know acetyl-CoA, you just have to carboxylate it to get to malonyl-CoA. You should probably know malonyl-CoA as well. Um, just so you get just so you get to where the building blocks are. Just know everything. <laughs> um, well, I could ask you to learn the structure of B12 covalent and write it out in every detail. That would be the whole exam. Yeah, you like that. Um, all right, so how does this enzyme work? So biotin, right, here's, it's got this long arm that should look familiar. It looks like lipoic acid on PDH, right? PDH, pyruvate dehydrogenase complex, right, which is the enzyme that takes acetyl-CoA Sorry, which takes pyruvate and makes acetyl-CoA out of it. Um, so now we've got a, a, a condition where we have acetyl-CoA and we want to add a carbon to it. Um, instead of making pyruvate though, which would be a three carbon compound, we're going to make malonyl-CoA. So we're going to add the carboxylate on the, on the side apart from the CoA. So we're going to form a carbon-carbon bond. Um, so the first step is to carboxylate the biotin that takes ATP to do. So here's the carboxylated biotin. The next step is for the carboxylated biotin to move from here to here, so there's a physical rearrangement. So just like in PD, PDH, where we have the first, decar the first CO2 split off step to generate the um, two carbon unit joint to thiamine pyrophosphate, then there's a physical movement of the lipoic acid arm to move that two carbon unit onto the transacetylase. Right? Then there's the reaction that forms the CO2A, and then there's another physical step like you could write these things out, chemical step, physical step, chemical step, with little Ks on a reaction pathway, for example, knowing that some of those Ks are chemistry and some of those Ks are movements. It's just a way of reminding yourself what actually has to happen. So the mechanism of this enzyme, what has to happen is there's a chemical step first that depends on the ATP energy to form a carbon-nitrogen bond to carry the one carbon unit. Then there's a physical rearrangement. This would be like a K1 or K2 or K3, whatever you want to be. Then here would be, this is K2 after binding. This would be K3, some rearrangement, where K3 is a physical step, no chemistry. That would mean if you can get from here to here, then you could also go backwards. K3, K minus three, because it's just, a, it's just a movement. If you can move one way, you can move the other way. There's no bond breaking or bond making. Then you have another chemistry step here. The carboxylate is transferred to the methyl amount of coenzyme. So now you have, to the methyl of, of acetyl-CoA, and now you have malonyl-CoA. And you have to have malonyl-CoA because that's how, because malonyl-CoA and acetyl-CoA together are the two substrates for fatty acid synthase, which is the enormous enzyme that actually builds up the fatty acid chains. What two? Malonyl-CoA malonyl -CoA and acetyl-CoA. So you already use an acetyl-CoA here, right? So you use one acetyl-CoA to make malonyl-CoA, and then the subsequent steps, on, on the fatty acid enzyme are going to be malonyl-CoA plus acetyl-CoA, add malonyl-CoA plus acetyl-CoA, keep on doing that. So the repeating four-step sequence for fatty acid biosynthesis is malonyl group, acetyl group. We're going to get to understanding how they're attached to this fatty acid synthase enzyme, but for now, we just note that they're both, there's these two diester linkages one of which is adding, has a malonyl group and another one has an acetyl group. Okay. So this is a decarboxylation, right? Here to here to here, right? So what's basically happened is that this CO2 in green is split off and that this carbon-carbon bond is formed to make this right here, right? It's here. Right. So now we have a four carbon unit where there used to be a two carbon unit and the CO2 got left, right? So three plus two equals one plus four. So we're splitting off a CO2. So, and, it, and furthermore, it's the same CO2 that just got added by acetyl-CoA carboxylase in the last slide. So this, the way this thing works is one enzyme adds a CO2 to acetyl-CoA to make malonyl-CoA, and then malonyl-CoA effectively reacts with a two-carbon acetate unit linked to the enzyme to 
take that CO2 back off and to form a, a carbon-carbon bond. Right? But because we're splitting off CO2 here, this reaction becomes a lot more favorable right? because this is very low energy. CO2 is a very low energy compound. All right, so we're going to see how this how this fits together, right? But but two plus three goes to four, one plus four, and then there's a reduction of dehydration and a reduction. Okay, to go from a keto group here to sorry keto group here to an alcohol, an alkene, and a methylene. So does that look familiar? Uh, it should look familiar. It's the opposite of what we just talked about, beta oxidation. Instead of going from a keto to a methylene, we just went from, sorry, a second. Instead of going from a methylene to a keto, we just went from a keto group to a methylene. And we used up an ADPH, so here's our pentose phosphate pathway, right? producing an ADPH, and this is going on in the cytoplasm. Whereas beta oxidation is going on in the mitochondria. So we're going to just, 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 this, 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 this slide here is a bit repetitive because I'm just going to show you this stuff again and again. Fatty acid synthases are large multi subunit enzymes in mammals. The enzyme is a dimer. This is a mammalian fatty acid synthase one. This is a fungal enzyme. This, the tertiary organization is a bit different. Right? We're not going to be concerned about the distinctions between species, different species on these enzymes. The mammalian enzyme is a dimer, and each, each of the two monomers has seven active sites in it. Now in E. coli, it turns out that the seven activities are actually on separate diffusible proteins, but in mammals, this thing is channeled. There's channeling on the surface of one enzyme, and so the whole thing goes on on one enzyme surface. Okay, so that's really the one we're going to be talking about, the mammalian one. All right, and you, so you see that the subunits and the different activities have different names. They have KS, MAT, DAG, so all these different acronyms for things, which are, um, they look more complicated than they really are once you actually see how they're associated with the activities. Um, there's a little bit of a complication. Um, MAT is um, really a combination of a malleable transfer and an acetyl transfer, two carbons, three carbons. Um, and so they get kind of lumped together into one subunit, but sometimes you'll see MT and AT as separate. But this MAT is just doing what the two of those do as separate pieces. So, an acetyl group and a malmo group are both linked to the enzyme. And in one four step sequence here, CO2 is split off. And um, a new two carbon unit is added. Right? So what we have, what's going on here is this CO2 is split off, a new two carbon unit is added on, and this pink guy goes here. Right? The next step, another, an, another, this CO2 is split off. Right? A, mal a new malonyl gets added on. That this guy got added to there. Right, so what's getting added on him newly every time is this other, a new malonyl group every time. But every time it gets added, CO2 comes off from it. And only two of its units get added on. Right, so you go through this process uh, seven times and you end up with C16. At the point where it's C16, it doesn't fit on the enzyme anymore and the water comes along and hydrolyzes it off. So um, the water that gets released, I'm sorry, the CO2 that gets released is the same one that got added on, as I mentioned before. So here's the carbon-carbon bond reaction okay. um, that results in this unit getting transferred onto this pink guy. CO2 is split off, right? And then the three-step sequence. Okay. So. CO2 releases the same carbon that's added by acetyl-CoA carboxylase right, to form the malonate. Um, 
thermodynamic, fa thermodynamic favorability is, is put in because we are decarboxylating here. And the ATP that's provided and going, that's used and going to the step is what's basically what's used to be able to help this work by being able to decarboxylate. So you have to carboxylate first, use up ATP there. So if you look at the two step, the, the carboxylase enzyme and then this one, the ATP is getting used in the first one to enable the, um, the capacity for decarboxylation in the second one. Right. And so really the only new step is this one, because then these three are the opposite of what you already know from both TCA cycle and beta oxidation. The only difference is you got to remember it's an ADPH. So here are the, here are the subunits. Um, notice that here AT and MT are written separately, but they could be written together, it doesn't matter. Um, acyl carrier protein uh, is a protein that has, um, here's the protein, here's a serine, and then it's got this long group on it, right? This is panathenic acid, this, this bigger structure is called 4 prime phosphopantothiene. Uh, but at the end of it, the business end has a sulfhydryl, and this is where the malonate is, is esterified. So we have coenzyme A as a thioester, but then we also have this guy getting esterified, the malonate, so that's another thioester. Okay. So that's carrying a, pro that's carrying, um, a malonate group, the ACP is. Um, the transacetylase, and um, the synthase and the transferase are groups, are, are uh, activities that are used to transfer the groups around, right? And to condense the acyl and the malonyl groups. We'll see that on a slide coming up soon. And then these last three, reductase, dehydratase, reductase, 